Hi, welcome back to the second part of the Terry Portrait Project in colour. I am working on the tie with vermilion. And the first layer, you can see that the underdrawing comes through and influences the layer of paint. But when I go back in again, the build-up of layers becomes more opaque and the quality of the vermilion can be seen a lot better. It's a much warmer red than when first applied. In hindsight, I might have wanted to use alizarin crimson, which would be a cooler red, but also a very transparent red that I could use. Or maybe I can use um, it later to cool down and create the areas of a uh, shade to show the form of that tie because it feels a little bit flat at the moment. Then I go in with French Ultramarine which is quite a good um, transparent blue. On top of that black it does influence it. You can see that it is toned uh, blue but such a dark version of it um, I'm quite pleased with that result. I used the same blue to make the first part of the check pattern on the shirt with the long verticals and uh, what I'm pleased with in this is how uh, unfussy it is. It's quite fast, it's quite it's quite rapid. It's not laboured like the skin tones have been laboured. So I'm quite pleased with the kind of uh, loose effect of that painting of the shirt. Then I think I make an orange with the two colours that I've used uh, before. The yellow ochre which was used for the skin tone and the vermilion. I made a kind of orange. It also harmonises the colours to stick to a limited palette. And that creates the uh, parallel colour for the check pattern. And that's okay. Perhaps later I'll go in and do a lighter blue, maybe a cobalt blue, uh, for the horizontals. I think at this point I begin to work on the background and put in some uh, grey. Just to layer a background colour on. I think this work will be treated again in artisan water mixable oil. Uh, because I think I'd like to practice that. That would be good. If you look at the three faces, the one on the bottom left is the one that is most successful. The uh, dilution of the uh, fast uh, binder medium uh, worked best on that. So a grey has gone down and as soon as it does, the shirt pops forward. It also helps knock back the skin tone a little bit. It's not as uh, glaring or as um, uh, dissatisfying as it was before. Uh, now I'm work working around the contours with a brush and I notice that I lose some of the drawing uh, when I do this. So with the central figure I'm going to have to go back in and fix the actual contouring of the hair because uh, it was um, enlarged and needs to be corrected. But I thought this neutral grey would be uh, quite good just to seal the paper and get it ready for the um, water mixable oil layers that may be going on top. Still relatively undecided about this one. I have another project on at the moment, which is planned for later on, uh, but is um, taking up a lot more of my attention. However, it's also at this kind of um, 
a sealing with acrylic and um, you know glazing, glazing over. I think I should have stuck to my original plan of sealing the drawing with the fast, the fast fixer medium, and then just glazing with um, the Atelier Interactive acrylic diluted with water. However, I've got a full range of mediums for the artisan water mixable oils and so I'd be keen to try them out and see if I can do something to rescue the skin tones on this one. Uh, after this video stopped, I continued with the artwork and um, you know, tried to resolve the skin tones a little bit more so I'm slightly more satisfied than at the point of this voiceover. This little detail on the tie was incorporating the grey from the background into the tie area, the banding, the silvery banding on the tie uh, in an effort to kind of harmonise the whole lot. So once again thank you for watching my video and for joining me in this uh, project. Thank you for sticking with it and hopefully you're learning something and being encouraged to experiment with your own art ideas, your techniques and your media.